Dirk Thompson, a man whose life was a tapestry of interstellar escapades, found himself finally rid of the alien named Zelina from the enigmatic planet Ferrolith. Dirk, ever the ambassador of human customs, had eagerly demonstrated the human mating ritual, not realizing that in some corners of the galaxy this could be misinterpreted as an invitation to something far more invasive. It sounded like a good idea at the time, but upon reflection, in what universe is a group of telepathic mating energy vampires ever a good idea? After his narrow escape from what he now referred to as the Great Life Force Drain of 42, Dirk was back at his favorite haunt, the Nebula's Edge, located at an Andromeda Cluster, a bar where the drinks were as strong as the stories were strange. Here, he was engaged in a fervent campaign, armed with nothing but a staple gun and a stack of hastily made posters warning of the succubus vampires of Ferrolith. The patrons, a motley crew of species from every quadrant, regarded Dirk with a mix of amusement and pity. Dirk's at it again, murmured Zog, a three-armed bartender, as he polished a glass with one hand and adjusted the universal translator with another. You see, Dirk was explaining to a group of bemused space tourists, I thought I was just showing her a bit of Earth culture. Next thing I know, I'm on Ferrolith, where mating involves a lot more mind games and telepathy than I signed up for. His tale unfolded with the flair of a man who'd lived through it, which he had, albeit barely. Zelina had seemed fascinated by human interactions, her eyes sparkling with what Dirk mistook for innocent curiosity. The invitation to her home planet was where the plot thickened like a poorly made Andromedan stew. Ferrolith was a world where the architecture floated and the inhabitants communicated through a complex network of mental links, which, as Dirk found out, was also how they, well, dined on their guests. The family dinner was an elegant affair, with Dirk as the unwitting main course. They started this, this mental siphoning, Dirk recounted, his hands waving as if to fend off invisible tendrils. I thought it was their way of saying hello, but my life force was slipping away like air from a punctured spacesuit. The crowd at the nebula's edge chuckled, some out of disbelief, others because the image of Dirk Thompson, the human who once wrestled a Glarbian slug for sport, being outwitted by a family of telepathic vampires, was too rich to ignore. And there I was, thinking I'd found a species eager to learn about human romance, Dirk lamented. Instead, I was nearly the romantic dinner. A young alien, whose species was known for their literal interpretations, asked with genuine concern, But Mr. Thompson, are you sure they weren't just trying to understand your concept of love through your energy? Dirk paused, considering. Well, if that's their idea of understanding, I'd rather they read a book next time, preferably one that doesn't involve me as the interactive chapter. As the evening wore on, Dirk's posters began to vanish, not because his warning was heeded, but because they were being collected as novelty items. Look, a genuine Dirk Thompson warning poster, one could hear exclaimed in various languages across the bar. Despite the laughter, there was an undercurrent of unease. After all, in a universe where the improbable was just another Tuesday, who was to say that succubus vampires weren't lurking in some dark corner of the cosmos? Dirk, now slightly inebriated on black hole slammers, leaned back, his mission for the night complete. He had not only survived another alien encounter, but had also managed to turn it into a cautionary tale albeit one met with scepticism. You know, he mused to no one in particular, in space, you're either the diner or the dinner. Today I was almost the latter, but tomorrow, who knows? And with that philosophical note, Dirk Thompson, the man who could turn any disaster into a dinner story, ordered another round, ready for whatever the universe would serve up next. After all, in the grand cosmic menu of life, Dirk was determined to be more than just an appetizer. As the laughter and chatter of the nebula's edge continued to swirl around him, 
Dirk Thompson was nursing his latest black hole slammer, his eyes scanning the crowd with a mix of wariness and weary amusement. Just as he was contemplating the wisdom of another drink, a figure approached his table, casting a shadow over his array of empty glasses. She was striking, with an aura of danger that could either mean she was the next chapter in his book of misadventures, or someone genuinely interesting. Her skin had a faint, luminescent quality, not unlike Xylena's, which made Dirk's hand instinctively reach for a nearby glass, ready to shatter it into a makeshift weapon. Easy there, hero, the woman said, her voice smooth as Velusian silk, holding up one of Dirk's posters. I'm not here to drain your life force. I'm more interested in how you managed to keep it. Dirk, with the glass still poised in his hand, squinted at her. And you are? Call me Valara, she introduced herself, sliding into the seat opposite him with the grace of a panther from the jungles of Vaughan. I'm a bounty hunter, and I've been tracking the Ferrolithian succubus vampires for a while now. Your poster here. She tapped it with a finger tipped with a claw that could probably open a can of space rations or a man's throat with equal ease. Caught my attention. Dirk relaxed, but only slightly, setting the glass down with a clink. Well, Valara, it's not every day my art project leads to a conversation with someone of your... profession. Valara chuckled, a sound that seemed to resonate with the hum of the bar's artificial gravity stabilizers. How did you survive them? They're not known for letting their prey walk away. It was a mix of dumb luck, a bit of charm, and, Dirk paused for effect, a very hasty exit through what I hope was their laundry chute. You see, when I realized what was happening, I played along just long enough to find an escape route. They didn't expect me to bolt during what they thought was a romantic moment. Valara's eyes, which seemed to shift colors with her mood, now sparkled with amusement. You outwitted a species known for their mental prowess with laundry? Never underestimate the power of clean clothes, Dirk quipped, now fully at ease, or the desire not to be someone's eternal snack. The bounty hunter leaned forward, her interest clearly piqued. I could use someone with your unique experience. These creatures are elusive, and you've not only encountered them, but lived to tell the tale. Care to join forces? There's a bounty on their heads and I could split it with you. Oh, and I bet that is not what really happened with your escape. I know this particular species and their telepathic abilities are legendary. I think what really happened is this Xylena had a soft spot for you and helped you escape. Am I getting warm? The bounty hunter, waiting for Dirk's answer like a confident cat, grooming itself after a nice mouse snack. Dirk considered her statement for a moment before replying, Yes, more or less, that is fairly close to what happened, but I'm still not sure why she let me go, still scratching my head over that one. His life had been a series of unexpected turns, each leading to stories and emptied bars when he recounted them. Here was an offer that promised danger, adventure, and perhaps a chance to redeem his somewhat tarnished reputation as the galaxy's most unwitting victim— whose only crime was thrill-seeking a bit too much. Well, Valara, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that life's too short to pass up on an adventure, especially when it involves not being on the menu. Count me in. Valara smiled, a predatory grin that would have sent lesser men running, but Dirk Thompson was no lesser man. He was, after all, a man who had danced with succubus vampires and lived to staple the tale. They shook hands, an interstellar pact sealed amidst the clinking of glasses and the distant hum of starship engines. Dirk Thompson, once a cautionary tale, was now a partner in what promised to be his most thrilling chapter yet, and as they planned their next move, the patrons of the Nebula's Edge unknowingly witnessed the beginning of yet another legend in the making, one where Dirk was not just the survivor, but perhaps this time the hero. Star Strider, a ship that looked like it was held together by cosmic duct tape and the sheer will of its captain, Valara.
Valara, with her sharp eyes and even sharper sword, was not the kind of bounty hunter you'd want to cross, but rather the kind you'd hope was on your side when the universe decided to throw its usual tantrum. Their mission was simple, or as simple as things get in a universe where the simple act of ordering tea could lead to a diplomatic incident. Track down the elusive homeworld of Ferrolith, where Zelina, a telepathic alien with the allure of a mythical siren, was last seen. Dirk had once described her kin as vampire succubi, a term he coined after a rather unfortunate encounter involving his mind, a misunderstanding about local customs, and a hasty escape which Zelina had helped him in a weird kind of way. The journey to Ferrolith was taking the scenic route, not by choice, but due to the Starstrider's navigation system, which had the reliability of a chocolate teapot. Dirk, ever the optimist, saw this as an opportunity to deploy his human charm on Valara, who had made it abundantly clear that the only thing she was interested in skewering was their target, not his romantic aspirations. So, Valara, Dirk began, leaning against a console that beeped in protest, ever thought about what you'll do after we catch this telepathic temptress? Valara didn't look up from her star charts. Retire somewhere quiet, where people don't talk unless they have something worth saying. Ah, a place of silence. Sounds peaceful, Dirk mused, missing the hint as wide as a wormhole. You know, I've always found that adventures like these are better with a bit of companionship. Valara's sword was out of its scabbard, faster than light could decide to be either a particle or a wave, its point hovering menacingly close to Dirk's throat. The only companionship you'll find here is with the sharp end of my blade if you don't focus on the mission. Dirk chuckled nervously, backing away. Point taken, quite literally. As they ventured deeper into space, the Star Strider encountered a series of bizarre anomalies. First, there was the nebula of misplaced socks, where Dirk swore he saw his favorite pair that vanished years ago. Then came the asteroid belt of infinite echoes, where every sound made was repeated in a cacophony that could drive even the most patient monk to madness. During these detours, Dirk learned more about Valara than he expected. She wasn't just a bounty hunter, she was a former galactic peacekeeper, disillusioned by bureaucracy, seeking justice in her own way. Her stories were filled with battles against space pirates, negotiations with sentient planets, and once a dance-off with a species that communicated through interpretive dance. Their conversation was interrupted when the ship's AI, with a voice like a bored cosmic entity, announced, Approaching Ferrolith, please prepare for existential dread and customs inspection. Ferrolith was not what either expected. Instead of a planet teeming with mind-reading seductresses, they found a world where the inhabitants, the Ferrolithians, lived in a state of constant telepathic connection, creating a harmony so profound that the very air sang with thoughts. Zelina, it turned out, was not a fugitive, but an ambassador of sorts, trying to find a way to shield her people from the mental noise of the galaxy. Upon meeting Zelina, Dirk's past experience came flooding back like a great deluge. She was not the succubus. He had met last time. Something was off. He couldn't put his finger on it. But this time she was a being of immense empathy, her beauty stemming from an inner peace that made the chaotic universe seem a tad less daunting and found himself once again caught up in her otherworldly beauty, like a lost puppy dog, wanting his belly rubbed. Welcome, Dirk Thompson and Valara, Zelina greeted, her voice a melody that seemed to resonate within their minds. I sense you've come a long way for understanding and forgiveness, not just for bounty. Valara, for the first time, sheathed her sword without a threat. We seek to understand, yes, and perhaps to help, but don't get things twisted. I still need my bounty payment. The trio sat in a garden, where thoughts blossomed into flowers, discussing how Ferrolith could coexist with the galaxy. Dirk, 
Using his charm for once in a way that didn't involve escaping through a ventilation shaft, proposed a cultural exchange program. Imagine, he said, Ferrolithians teaching the galaxy about mental peace and in return learning about the diversity of life out there. It could be enlightening. Zelina smiled, her agreement felt rather than heard. Valara, watching Dirk, rolled her eyes in a disapproving manner, realized there was more to him than the flirtatious rogue. He had a knack for bridging worlds, not just jumping between bedsheets for a quick thrill. As the illusion of peace and harmony enveloped the garden, Dirk continued his enthusiastic pitch, completely unaware of the subtle shift in the atmosphere. Valara, however, felt a prickling at the back of her neck, a warrior's instinct that something was amiss. But Dirk's relentless banter provided a distracting cover for the creeping danger, which is what he does best, and would explain why he gets himself into so much trouble. Zelina's smile never wavered, but her eyes, those deep pools of cosmic tranquility, began to shimmer with a predatory glint. Your idea is fascinating, Dirk, she projected into their minds, her voice now laced with a hypnotic undertone. Let us celebrate this new alliance. Around them, the garden seemed to pulse, the flowers releasing spores that filled the air with a sweet, soporific scent. Dirk, caught up in the moment, inhaled deeply, his eyes glazing over slightly. This place, it's like nothing I've ever experienced, he murmured, his usual sharp wit dulling. Valara, reaching for her sword, found her movements sluggish. She cursed under her breath, realizing too late that she hadn't donned the telepathic shield helm, a standard precaution she never neglected until now, distracted by Dirk's uncharacteristic display of diplomacy. Xylena stood, her form now less ethereal and more imposing. You see, the galaxy is full of chaos, noise, pain. Here I offer peace, unity, and sustenance. Her voice was no longer just in their minds, but seemed to echo from the very planet itself. The Ferrolithians, previously serene, now revealed their true nature, their faces contorted into expressions of hunger, their telepathic abilities no longer weaving harmony but instead ensnaring minds. Valara, fighting the mental fog, managed to draw her sword, but her movements were like fighting through molasses. Dirk, snap out of it! she shouted, her voice sounding distant even to herself. Dirk, however, was sinking deeper into the illusion, his mind a playground for Zelina's manipulations. He saw himself as a hero, a bridge between worlds, not noticing the chains of psychic energy wrapping around his consciousness, and her parents were there too, which almost made him snap out of the trance from sheer embarrassment as they were nude, thinking to himself, well, that's new. Just as Xylena approached Dirk, ready to feast on his vibrant life force, a sudden burst of clarity hit him. Perhaps it was his innate survival instinct or the sheer absurdity of his situation finally piercing through the illusion, but he remembered something crucial. Wait, Dirk exclaimed, his voice breaking through the enchantment. What about the, the universal treaty of sentient rights? You can't just... Feed on us without due process, and I thought you had a soft spot for me after. I showed you how humans do the procreating, and remember that thing I did with my tongue. Surely no mind pleasure could ever match that. Zelina paused, her control faltering at the unexpected resistance, remembering the fun time she had with Dirk. This gave Valara the moment she needed. With a Herculean effort, she lunged forward, not with her sword, but with the telepathic shield helm she managed to pull from her belt, slamming it onto Dirk's head. The effect was immediate. Dirk's eyes cleared, and he gasped, as if emerging from underwater. Valara, now with her own helm hastily secured, felt her strength return. You thought to trap us. Valara's voice was cold her sword now steady in her hand. Zelina's facade of peace crumbled entirely, revealing a creature of desperation rather than malice. We are dying, she confessed, her telepathic voice now a whisper in their protected minds. Our world cannot sustain us. 
We need the psychic energy to survive. The revelation shifted the dynamic. Here was not a villain, but a species on the brink. Dirk, ever the negotiator, even when nearly made into a meal, proposed, perhaps there's another way, a symbiosis, not parasitism. There are beings in the galaxy who might willingly share mental energy for the experience or knowledge you could provide. Valara, though skeptical, saw the logic. We could mediate, but no more traps. Honesty or next time, my sword won't hesitate. Zelina, faced with extinction or change, chose the latter. The Feralithians withdrew their mental tendrils, and as the garden returned to its deceptive calm, negotiations began in earnest. Thus, what started as a bounty hunt turned into a diplomatic mission, with Dirk inadvertently becoming an ambassador for interspecies mental health rights, and Valara, his reluctant protector, ensuring that this time the peace was real, not just another beautiful illusion. With all of the commotion and talking about a peaceful resolution, Valara had almost forgotten the reason why she had came here in the first place, her bounty it was due, and a lot of bidders back at the bounty HQ had a high price on Exlinia head. Valara suddenly moved towards Exlinia, removed her sword with blinding speed like an African cheater on heat. Sorry, Dirk, but I am going to be needing my credits now. And to be honest, I have had enough of you and this freak show making nice. Dirk sighing at the new complications. Look, Valara, we have only just worked things out. Maybe Xlyenia could compensate your bounty somehow. Dirk looking over to Xlyenia for an agreeing nod. I have treasures beyond your wildest dreams. Let me show you. There is a vault in the main palace. Valara somewhat started to relax at the thought of getting some sort of payment for all the trouble, and most of all, for listening to all of Dirk's ranting.